Welcome back, Supernatural. Review for you! Alright, got a lot to cover and not a lot of time, so let's go! So Cass is back. Cass is all business. Cass is awesome. And he's driving a pimp car, which I think is great. <laughs> Um, he was so, I think that he's finally found a really great balance of human and angel, especially since now he's, he's got grace, but it's not, he doesn't have any wings, so he can't like, he can't just like jet set, so he's got this really strange sort of angel stuck in a car kind of a thing, which I think is really interesting to see. But he can still be, he can still do the healing thing, and he's still sort of mind reading, and I think that's neat. And... I think that my favorite line in the whole show was when he was talking to Dean and Dean goes, I guess that makes us both a couple of dumbasses. And Cass said, I prefer to think of it as trusting, less dumb, less ass. And I just think that shows that hanging out with humans so much has really changed him as as a being. And I think that's so cool. Um, the other thing that I thought was really neat was that we haven't seen him be angry in a long time because he's been kind of nuts and sort of away from conflict and um so when he found out who was uh possessing Sam and he got like real scary and you could tell he was being really scary because Dean looks scared and Dean you know can hold his own um but when he found out who was uh squatting inside of Sam he like freaked out and I think that was really interesting because aside from his little outburst about how he can't go back to heaven because um he's afraid he'd kill himself aside from that little tiny outburst we haven't really seen a whole lot of anger from Cass and I think that is so interesting I see that's so interesting and I think that Misha Collins did a great job obviously So Dean is a mess. He is just a mess. And the teaser at the beginning, the road so far, made me cry because Kevin. <laughs> and then the whole pyre and then his little temper tantrum that he threw inside of the Men of Letters building. Just, oh, started off at a really bad start and just kept getting worse. There was no good for Dean in any of this episode. And that's sucks. What concerns me is that Dean and Sam have always had a really close relationship, but this sort of codependent thing is getting really, really heavy with Dean. Like he, how many people is he going to allow into his brother's head? You know what I mean? First, there's Ezekiel, who turns out not to be Ezekiel, and then there's freaking Crowley? <laughs> Crowley. <laughs> Um, and it's just, when's it gonna be, when's it gonna be done? Because Sam straight up was like, I was ready to die, I was willing to die, but Dean was like, I wasn't. And that's a lot of, it seems almost like Dean's trying to play God as far as where his brother is concerned. And, um... I think that is a really interesting development because yes, he would always have done anything for his family, but it's getting to the point where it's going against their wishes maybe. And I think that's going to be a really fun thing to explore later. There was also this really strange moment, character development wise, where he was talking to Cass and he apologized to him of his own volition. Now, Dean knows when he's sorry about something and he apologizes, but he usually does it under some kind of duress or pressure and he apologized for throwing Cass out of the bunker and nobody pressured him to, nobody asked him to. He just straight up was like, I'm sorry, that was out of line. And Cass, of course, is super understanding because he's Cass. But it was really interesting. I think that Dean is growing up in some areas of his life and not at all in other areas of his life. And I think that the fear of being alone is pushing him to do just very strange things. And then, of course, the sad, sad moment at the end when he's like, I'm poison. And yes, it's something that's been touched on the whole series that people around him tend to not live very long. But this is the first time I feel like he's really articulated it that way and, and admitted that it's him, maybe. 
Not that I think it's him necessarily. I think that their whole existence, both of them, is just this vortex of dangerousness. But he straight up was like, I'm poison and I refuse to drag anybody through this anymore. So I'm gonna go. And then there's Sam. Sam is back, which I didn't think was gonna happen for at least another couple episodes. Um, which means also that Gadriel is inside of Weird Face Hot Body again, which I think is kind of cool. Um, I can never remember his name. I just call him Weird Face Hot Body ever since I saw him on Dollhouse. Because <laughs> I'm terrible. Um, so he's back in with Weird Face Hot Body and Sam is back and Cass is gonna, you know, fix him up, which I think is cool and everything. But Sam is not happy. Sam is now alone with the exception of Cass. At least as far as we know at the end of this episode. And Sam knows that Dean lied to him in the biggest, most invasive way he possibly could. And he let two things possess him. And that is so uncool. Sam, inside of his head when he was asking, I just don't understand why these ghouls are hunting cheerleaders. Hilarious, by the way. Um, Take Charge Sam in that scene was so cool because we've been seeing Jared Padalecki play this character that is not Sam. We've been seeing him play this for you know, a few episodes now, bits and pieces, and a lot in the last episode. But he he was so convincingly not Sam that now to see him as Sam, even if it's inside his own head, being strong and taking charge like that in a moment of crisis was so cool to watch. And I think that it's a testament to Jerry Padalecki's acting that he can be two such different people in the same world, even inhabiting the same body. And now... Corey plays devil's advocate. I'm just saying, Abaddon is great and everything, but Crowley, <laughs> Crowley is the king of hell and I think he should stay the king of hell. I think that he's being suspiciously helpful, but it is really great to see him sort of back in the game, especially at the end when he's free and he's basically lecturing Abaddon about, about hell. Cause she's a knight and that's cool and everything, but all she is really is a warrior. And he's like this skeezy politician, but who runs things efficiently and gets things done. And he had so many good lines in this episode. Mark Shepard is just a god and he's so, so funny. Oh. He's so good. Anyway, the part where he was saying that every demon would get a say, a virgin, and all the entrails they could eat, that is so funny. And the part where he's like, what are you, a pimp? <laughs> anyway, so Crowley, great. So glad he's back in the game. But I'm interested to see, because he is being helpful with little to no manipulation, really. He's basically like, straight up deal. I help you, you let me out. And um, I think that that might have a lot to do with what happened to him in the church in Stull. And I'm super excited to see how that plays out because he's obviously back campaigning to be king of hell again now that things are sort of in flux because of Abaddon. So my thoughts on the episode as a whole, now that I've had time to sort of think it through and decompress, um, Metatron, more like mega douche. I j uh, and he wasn't even in this episode that much and I still was like, oh, I just want to punch your stupid beardy face in. Because, you know, good actor, <laughs> good writing, everything was good. I am really upset that they, that uh, Sam and Dean are apart again. And I know that they'll somehow end up back together because they just will. They always do. But I'm interested to see what the writers have done because this feels pretty damn unreconcilable. And I'm really interested to see what kind of strange calamity brings them back together. Um, especially since Cass is with Sam, because Sam needs fixin', you know. And Dean is alone, and whenever Dean is alone, not, not good news. It's never good. Um, Abaddon? More like Abba Bomb. I love her. She's so funny, and like, not like funny haha, but just like funny interesting, because she's so cocky and she's so arrogant and she's so sure of herself and the fact that everyone around her is going to just listen and so that moment at the end when she tells her little minions to be like she's like go bring me his head and they're like mm, 
maybe don't, maybe we won't. I don't think we will. And she's like legitimately confused about why aren't you obeying my every whim? What's going on? Um, and she's just ruthless. She's so interesting and she's pretty hot, let's be real. And she travels in style in her leather jacket and her shiny black car. And I could see her ruling hell, except that I can't because only Crowley, only Crowley can rule hell in my humblest of opinions. So I am very excited about next week's episode because I just watched the preview thing for it and the clip and everything and I'm interested to see Dean and Crowley together working and I'm interested to see Cass and Sam at the Men of Letters bunker together. Um, I think that the cute little bit about the peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the promo, which you should go watch, um, is, is funny. It's so very Cass. It's so very... I'm confused and a little frustrated. I'll miss you, PB and J. Like, it's just, it's gonna be good, and I can tell, and I'm very excited to see what's coming next. So, I'm just gonna go now and drown in my feels. Um, I will see you guys later. Later, taters!